how are you all? It's your girl Simrajit Kulman here and today we're going to be talking about what I wish I knew before starting my training contract. But before we start, can we talk about how my top matches the lights behind me? That's the level of coordination that I've always wanted to achieve in my life. So please celebrate this with me. Anyway, let's get straight into the video today. So as I mentioned, I want to talk about what I wish I knew before I started my training contract. I'm now in my second seat of my training contract and albeit I've only been at my firm for around seven months, I feel like I've learned so much and I just want to share that all with you. For those of you who don't know me very briefly, I make content for aspiring solicitors just like yourselves. I talk about my journey to becoming a solicitor and beyond. And I also just vlog random moments of my life and share it with you all. Right, so the first thing that I wish I knew before starting my training contract is to not put pressure on yourself to know absolutely everything. I felt that because I've done a law degree and because I did my LPC, I should go into my training contract all guns blazing, knowing absolutely everything about that area of law. And that most certainly was not the case. My first seat was in construction, which was an area of law that I have never encountered at any point in my life and it was different it was different for sure there were some things of course that were relevant to my lpc knowledge for example it was a litigation seat and i had a bit of knowledge about civil litigation as that was one of the modules during the lpc however that wasn't enough for me to basically call myself an expert in that field and i think not being too hard on yourself and realizing that the clue is in the name you are a trainee solicitor not a qualified solicitor so that's the first thing I'd say off the bat. The second thing I'd say is knowing the IT system is so underrated. And I think when I started my training contract, I thought, and I probably I still am, I am a bit of an IT whiz. I feel like when it comes to IT, I'm quite good. In my family, I am the person who fixes the router when it goes wrong. I am the IT guru at home. So I thought when it comes to my training contract, I won't have any problem. I will be familiarized with the IT systems very quickly and I soon learned that wasn't the case. It would take me so long to even save a document because I'd think, where am I saving this? What file is it? And I think getting used to the whole file management system was something that I definitely did not anticipate. I also thought that I was an expert with doing meetings virtually because obviously we've been in a pandemic. We've been having Zoom calls left, right and center. So I thought that I'd be okay with doing Teams meetings as well but there were quite a few features that I was not familiar with and it really made me realize, wow, Sim, you really underestimated how important this stuff is. So every time you are joining a law firm, usually you do get an IT induction. All I can say is really listen in on those inductions. They are so helpful. I would also say getting involved in the wider business is also very key, but don't let this overpower or shift the balance uh, for the important work that you have to do for the business. Now, what I mean by wider business is things like getting involved in the sports and the socials, the pro bono, uh, the DNI, all of that aspect. They're really, really important. And I got really involved in all of those elements in my first seat. And that certainly came back in feedback and was praised upon. I was encouraged to do so. However, there were times, especially recently, where I felt like I had taken too much on my plate. And it meant that, for example, I was spending quite a lot of time on non-chargeable things, which is perfectly okay, it's fine, but it did cause me additional stress when I had that on top of the adding deadlines of the chargeable stuff that I was supposed to be doing as well. So to make sure that I'm not in that situation again, I think it's really about being quite aware about your capacity, being realistic with yourself, and not just saying because I'm a trainee I have to take on absolutely everything and anything and you know really overwhelm yourself I don't think that's the way to do it because that could mean the quality of your work for the chargeable stuff could really decline and even your involvement with the wider business even though you're involved you may not be able to put in the effort that you want and you may let people down you may let you may let people's expectations down because you have taken on too much so yeah, I'd say just be realistic with your capacity. The fourth thing I would like to say is the process of selecting seats is a lot more intense than you think. I thought before I started my training contract that seat selections will be, you know, I'll if I get my seat, you know, if I get my first choice, it's fine. If not, we'll see what happens. And to be fair, it's still like that. But I think the element of waiting for your next seat it was so intense. I was on edge. Every time I got an email from grad recruitment, I my heart would honestly drop. I don't know why. Maybe it was just a me thing, but I found it really intense. 
And if you are a trainee solicitor and you've gone through the seat selection process and the seat rotation process, let me know if you felt the same way because I don't want this to just be a me problem. Let's all share our trauma of going into a next seat. Now, the fifth thing that I found personally when I was doing my training contract that what I wish I knew when I started is keeping your cool is a big part of the job description. And what I mean by that is you are expected as a trainee to take on a lot of things. You are in a completely new environment. You're meeting new people pretty much every day. You are doing new work, you're meeting new clients. And on top of that, you're expected to do well. You're expected to be keen, enthusiastic. You're expected to put a smile on your face. You're expected to manage deadlines. There's a lot that you have to do. And I think it's very, very easy to lose your cool. It's also very easy for you to lose your cool. Say, for example, if you're working with a client or a colleague and you know you don't agree with them or there might be a bit of a personality clash. And I think that's something that's representative, not only in a legal environment, but any workplace, you're going to meet people that you don't get along with, or you may find that their style of managing or the way they do things is very different to how you would do it. And in those situations, you are expected to keep your cool. You're expected to not lash out at people and get stressed. I mean, that's certainly the culture in my firm. In my firm, you are expected to maintain calm, collected, respectful. Another thing that I didn't expect to be part of the job description is essentially the role as a trainee solicitor. What I found is to make everyone else's life in your team that little bit easier. And by that, I mean, not only should you be doing the tasks that are set for you, but your mind should be thinking about what next can you do, almost like over delivering on something. And I think that's something that takes a lot of experience. You have to be able to know the matter in order to be able to do those kind of things. So right now I've just started my second seat and I've not been able to, I guess, over deliver because I'm not that familiar with real estate and not that familiar with the clients and how the matter is being progressed. Hopefully maybe by, you know, within two months, maybe three, I'll be able to run my own matters, I'll be able to over deliver and really, I guess, provide not only just the task that's been set, but preempt what future tasks could be as well. So yeah, I think that's what I had to say for this video, very kind of straight to the point. I think that's how we like it here in the Mandem. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.